Um, like I said, we're operating under the assumption that Sebastian walked off. Uh, we have no evidence to disprove that. Uh, the family has been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement and our investigation. Um, There is no evidence to support foul play. I think the TBI said it best. They've been nothing but cooperative with law enforcement since day one of this investigation. There is no evidence to support foul play on the part of Sebastian's parents. We have not cleared anyone, but we have absolutely no evidence to support foul play. Hey, Burgett, can you put a drone right over top of this trash can, this dumpster, see if there's anything in it? There hasn't been one video that you there's, guys have had that you said that's... There is not a confirmed sighting of Sebastian on camera. Now, earlier this morning, there were crews around Sebastian Rogers' home. A bloodhound was sniffing around the area, and a dive crew put on wetsuits with oxygen tanks. It's unclear why they returned to that area, though. We do know search crews moved their efforts west of the original search grid today. Yesterday, they focused on bodies of water, even draining a pond east of Sebastian's home. 200 people have been on the ground each day, and many are flying helicopters and drones in the air. Police are asking neighbors to not join in on this search, but they should check their own properties. The Sumner County Sheriff's Office tells News 2 their investigators, assisted by Kentucky State Police, are searching the landfill in Kentucky where trash went from Sebastian's neighborhood. Kentucky State Police confirmed to News 2 investigators are still at the scene at the landfill in Hopkins County. The Sumner County Sheriff's Office says there is no specific information that indicates evidence related to the search for Sebastian may be there. The Sheriff's Office says it is an investigative precautionary measure to eliminate possible options and questions. Um, at this time, the decision has been made to scale back on the ground search operations. Uh, let me be clear that this does not diminish our commitment to finding Sebastian. This is simply us transitioning from the ground search to the investigative side. Uh, we are still committed to finding Sebastian and bringing him home safe. We have no leads, no details to indicate that Sebastian is not alive. So when the search officially began on February 26th, it was about 11 a.m. That's 11 hours since Sebastian was reported reportedly last seen by his mother. So the EMA director says it's possible he had enough time to get out in front of officials. So while a physical. I've been through the of what the fire tower we went through there we've been down to by the lake we've been through all the campgrounds we've gone through almost every one of the lodges we went through the shop that doesn't open till spring we've been through every abandoned building we come across everything just trying to find him all looking for him <clears throat> so this location here is between Memphis and Hendersonville. Uh, Seb Sebastian was reported missing at his step parents, around his step parents' home in Hendersonville. Uh, why here though? Well, that one child, he was autistic. In 13 days, he walked 200 miles. 13. He is. I've been searching everywhere. I mean, anything out of that, that five mile radius that the initial search did, they covered everything there. But there's stuff elsewhere. I mean, we got a lot of territory to cover. And it being over a month, he could be anywhere currently. So I'm searching everywhere. Go ahead. Next big track back up. Going into the construction side over here, back towards the beach. I'm behind you. It's awful muddy. Do you see any footprints, anything? He shouldn't have any shoes on. 
Hey, this is all dry, hard pack. I do have some footprints over here. Right there where you're standing? Yeah. Leading right over here to the retaining pond. No shoes, just footprints? My shoes that Max went straight into the pond. He literally dove into it. 12 well, DMA one, you direct. Hey, repeat that, Rice. Let me make sure he... Max led me straight to the retaining pond. Over behind Willow Boulevard, he dove right into the, into the water. Yeah, do you see any footprints around it? There's a few uh, footprints in some of the softer dirt uh, headed straight this way on the track that he was running. Was any of the canines able to pick up on a scent or something that can lead you to maybe a direction where he might have been? We've, we've done that. We've actually cast the dogs in intersections to see if they take us. And, and our, our dogs are scent specific, and we have scent articles from, from the home. And, uh, and they have not. Um, we have gotten some tracks away from the home, and, uh, and we haven't had anything that, that leads us to Sebastian, obviously. One of the dog handlers told me first day, wow. Monday, that the dog popped to a trail, and they followed it and went all the way around, and it ended in a construction site, but it just it ended. It, it's like there was nothing there. Right. And that's a little odd. Which right. Leads me to believe that, well, if it ends, normally the scent ends when you stop traveling on foot. From my understanding, that would mean that he got into a car. If he got into a car, it's, it, just so I understand the construction site itself, was did the scent stop in the middle of the construction site? Or did it stop they on the side of the road? Me. Ah, okay. They did, they didn't tell me. Okay, because I'm, I'm. Did the dogs ever pick up a scent for Sebastian? For my information that I've been given, no. It's all been scent dogs that have hit. The cadaver dogs have not hit on anything that we know of. It's curious about a statement that Miss Proudfoot made earlier that canine dogs hit on the barn around the home and near a retention pond did that happen i'm not sure about the barn but the retention pond yes because law enforcement says the dogs did not hit but miss Crawford a... says they did hit around the retention pond. So there's been a lot of miscommunication in regards to what is and what is not uh, to help clear that up. Um, law enforcement has actually spoken directly with me, showed me a few things. What I can tell you is there from day one, there was five dogs that started the uh, scent for the search. And then after that, from the next eight days out from that, there have been dogs from all over the country that have come in and done searches and had scent hits in various locations. Um, but I would say the, a certain percentage of them tend to go toward the same spot, which would have been a retention pond. So the law enforcement dogs did not hit on the retention pond. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying they did. There was at least three that I know for a fact that did hit on the retention pond. And the pond has been drained, correct? And there was nothing there? Yes, ma'am. They have walked it, drained it, and there's nothing. The, the retention pond was only knee deep anyways. On one occasion, Mr. Proudfoot, you stated that you and Mrs. Proudfoot have been, quote, vetted and cleared of foul play. That was stated on Chronicles of Olivia. Is that true? What do you mean by that? And do, you, do you know how like how much they actually drained? They drained the whole thing. It's okay. So initially when it, when, it, when they went over to look at it, it was only knee deep. 
from the picture that you showed me, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what where they're cutting. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out. I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was deep. Solar lights that we have in the garden. There's yep. two lights on the side of the house above the garage that are on at all times. Oh, yeah, those are on. Miss Proudfoot, who is the last person that saw or heard Sebastian alive the Sunday before he went missing? Uh, two of his aunts, um, a cousin, and um, the staff where we had dinner. normal he was playing in his room um, when I told him to go to bed he did <laughs> um, he said good night mom I love you Katie we had a good time we were laughing we were joking um, he talked to family on the phone during breakfast to brag um, we went and picked up our niece, yes, uh, yeah, I got a call and um, asked if I could go and pick her up and I did and so um, we went and did that and we went to BJ's, um, had a good time there, he ate a colossal popcorn, um, came home to put groceries away because we bought snacks because, you know, he's 15 and snacks. Um, we went to the bowling alley, and then from there we went to dinner, came home. Um, he took out the trash, because that's his chore. He takes the can to the end of the driveway. Um, about 9 o'clock, told him to go to bed. And he said, come out of his room where he was playing, and he said, All right, good night, Mama. Good night, puppies. I love you. And went to bed. Um, he was doing something in his room because about an hour later I heard some noise and I was like, I don't care what you're doing in there, but go to sleep. And um, about midnight I got up and I went to bed. And um, six o'clock. Is, is one way to put it, I hate to say it like that, but the last. Like, time that you can verify that someone outside of that home saw him or he was on video. 
It would have been Sunday leaving Texas Roadhouse. And what time was that about? About 6.30. And who, do, do you know everyone who was there at Roadhouse with Sebastian? All I saw was as they left the building and got into Katie's car, it was just her and Sebastian. And anything unusual about the video? Not that I could observe. From oh, yes, a neighbor advised that he's found the child under his child, under his son's car, which is across the street, two doors up. So be sure and search under cars and under things. I mean, he's a good kid. He's not. He's not a mischievous child by any means. Katie and Chris. He says he is in contact with law enforcement every single day. And like them, he says he is completely at a loss to explain exactly what happened to his son. It's a mystery. The working story, of course, is that Sebastian, who has autism, walked away from his Hendersonville home in the middle of the night, barefoot and alone. But Roger says no. He says it makes absolutely no sense that search crews and bloodhounds have found no trace of the boy. And he says Sebastian was not the type of child who would just wander away like this on his own. <laughs> Sebastian hasn't been on his medication in 20 days. So he is rambunctious. He he's gonna be hungry. He will he, he turns into a bottomless pit. I mean he, he's your teenage boy, you know, always hungry. Um on the spectrum, yes. But not one autistic child in this world is like another one. What we can tell you is he's he's smart. He can be goofy. Um, he kind of has issues with personal space. He hasn't mastered. He can be a, <laughs> up he, in your face kind of kid. He's <laughs> he can be aggressive if he's upset. Yeah, he's emotional. He's a teenager. He's got. He doesn't like punch and hit and throw, but he no. gets really like aggressive stanced or like clipped where he just won't talk to you or um you know if he's really upset he like growls yeah he he's not a child that wonders he's not one that is like, he doesn't have a history of being no. an eloper which is common and i have friends with children on the spectrum who do struggle with elopement with their children, but no, Sebastian, that's one thing, he's always been a blessing. He's not been an eloper or a runner. Um, his, his primary areas are like social and emotional dysregulation issues and things like that. Um, but he's very smart, he's functional. Um, overall, he's a pretty happy kid, I mean, he's, He's a teenager, he's coming into his hormones, he's angry that he's growing a mustache, but um, for the most part, he's a happy kid. And um, what are your He's not the type to put on, he, he's not the type to leave the house without putting on socks and shoes. As for running away or leaving, he didn't take his backpack. He didn't take his switch. He didn't take his phone. I mean, just doesn't make sense. And he's not been, uh, he's not one to, to wander. He's never eloped before. So let's talk about outside of the internet. Did he ever express any issues about his home environment at all? Not at his mom. Not not he never expressed anything about his mom and dad's his stepfather's place. Okay. Uh he liked the dogs. You know, he was supposed to come live with me at the end of school. Summer break, he was supposed to move in with me full time. Oh wow. 
Do, do you feel that they were taking good care of him? I've got information from podcasts that they were showing that horrify me. And it was like, it's supposed to be about Sebastian. They wanted to talk about themselves. I don't get that. This is, we need to get Sebastian's face out to everybody. Have them looking for Sebastian. This isn't about me. It's not about his mom. It's not about his stepdad. This is about Sebastian. He needs to be found. Katie was pretty adamant about having a good weekend, which meant my son wasn't misbehaving in her point of view. So I'm trying to read between the lines here. Do you believe that she doesn't exercise enough patience with with Sebastian and that causes some problems in the in, in the home or she doesn't approach her her responsibilities as a parent appropriately? Like there's there's something wrong. Autistic off there? children take a different well, autistic children take it's, it's a different aspect when you're when you're a parent of an autistic child. Um, you don't really get much freedom because you're you have to set a routine and you have to go abide by it. And when she's sitting there telling me she put him to bed at nine o'clock the night before or nine thirty the night before, and then you know she heard him in there and told him to go to bed and things like that it's like there's not much of a routine and if there's no routine then autistic children don't act the same way they're supposed to when i've had him there's a routine in my house when i have him and he he's a he's a teenager you know you're gonna listen you're gonna hear some some back talk probably i mean they're growing they're going to rebel some sort of some way. They're teenagers, you know. He doesn't have social media. Have you checked his phone? His phone has been thoroughly checked, yes, ma'am. Not that I know of. He didn't have any internet access or anything on there. He would have been able to call, text, take a picture, send a picture, use the calculator. That's about it. Is there any chance, and I know there were, rel there were rules in place, but is there any chance that he could have been lured by someone either from school or, or somewhere else to like, hey, you know, we're doing something at night or we're going somewhere or we're going to meet up. Is, 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 is that, you think that's in the I realm of possibilities? That highly, I find that highly unlikely because my son doesn't really have a concept of days or, how to, or, or time in order to plan something like that.
pieces about that video that are floating on the internet. Okay, and that is exactly what it is. It's speculations. Now, what I can give you an official statement on is TBI Newslink has released a statement from law enforcement between local law enforcement, state law enforcement, some federal law enforcement, and they have analyzed that video so many times over that everything that everybody is trying to assume is a flashlight, I'm, I hate to say this, it's not. As much as we would love it to be one, it's not. Um, I'm not going to go into details as far as where that video is shot from, but I can tell you, as the parents, we have seen the video firsthand from law enforcement. We know exactly where it was taken from, and nothing that is being assumed right now is actually true about that video, unfortunately. A trash truck went through, picked up trash, and when it left, of course it went faster. It didn't have to stop to pick up trash. That's just false information provided by a particular person. No evidentiary value? It is of no evidentiary value. Can you tell me what those lights are? No. Why? Because the investigation remains ongoing. And so it could play a role down the road depending on developments? We don't know what we don't know. So yes, it could play a role. I don't know why. I don't know why he walked out that door. He got out and walked away and was outside of the search radius before we started searching to the worst. Yeah. And, and that's currently where we're at. I mean, it's... Yeah. I'm really trying not to go down that road because well, we're going to find him. What's going on at the park here? I'm hoping that somebody listened to me and I told them drop my son off. There's not a lot of cameras here and it gets a lot of traffic. So I figured I'd drive here and do some searching. Yeah. Through those doors. He could, yes ma'am. But I heard in another interview where Mr. Proudfoot said he was not a, quote, wanderer. He didn't wander around. He had never left the home before on his own. Is that right? Correct. We haven't had issues with him running or um, taking off in the past. Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions. A, a potential kidnapping? Anything is speculation at this point in time because there is no, as they have said, evidence that leads towards foul play. But there's things that just don't add up. All law enforcement, with everybody that's involved, there's nothing that's been eliminated. Everything is on the table. Everything is being looked at from every possible aspect. Uh, speculating causes problems. Assumptions cause issues. And based on facts of what everybody knows, right now, there's nothing. And everything is still on the table to be looked at. Playing video games somewhere. Nobody's letting him, you know, whoever's got him, they're not letting him see the regular news. They're not letting him surf the internet. Or else he'd know that I'm looking for him. And he'd know that he should actually be trying to get a hold of me. And that keeps me going. Is there a strong reason to believe he may have been abducted? I don't know if he's been abducted or if he's just, you know, over at a friend's house. Never know. But I'll know when I find him. Um, We're not ruling anything out. So, 
what is your theory about where is Sebastian? I wish I knew where he was, to be honest. I, your theory, your theory. I think it's possible that someone has my son. Why? Because I feel like if he had been close to the house or had walked off that we would found him by now with as many people as we had searching. It's just better to stick to the facts. Are you both in the clear? I can tell you that mom, myself, and the father have worked very fully and cooperatively with all agencies across the board. We have anything that they've wanted, we have provided. What do you want to say to Sebastian? What do you want to say? questions, of course. And they're, you know, the first thing they did is, where were you? And I'm like, I've been at work for yeah. the last 12 hours. You know? Yeah. They turned around, they, they took our phones, make sure that everything that we stated was verifiable. Right. And he's not. Has been vetted. I can't go into details, but I can tell you we have been vetted and we have been cleared um, of all possibility of wrongdoing, foul play. There's nothing to that. Um, to police, both of you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, oh. ma'am, we have. Has police searched your, all of your devices, your laptop, your iPad, everything? Everything. Yes, ma'am. Do you think Katie and Chris are suspects? I have no idea. Are you, Chris or Katie, or any of you suspects in this case? Or not. Uh, have you been cleared? I don't know. The investigation is still ongoing. We wouldn't be cleared until the investigation is done. But currently, from my understanding, they don't have any information that would attach us to any wrongdoing. I haven't spoken to them for at least two weeks. They have, they're not talking to me. They're have the three of you been in contact every day like you were several weeks ago about this? I was in contact with both Katie and Chris today, but I've heard he said his phone is open and available. Well, so is mine. Problems and, and she was running into some rough waters. Any anything Most like that? Most of my discussions were actually taking care with Chris, and uh, he was Sebastian was supposed to come live with me. Chris was working on Katie on getting her to agree to it, and all I wanted was my son to come live with me. In order for him to actually do something that's out, out of the normal, something would have had to happen that he just felt that he couldn't deal with it. If he knew he was going to go out walking or anywhere in the yard or whatnot, he would put on socks and shoes. He had a horrible experience as a child with fire ants. He learned it's always socks and shoes or at least something on your feet to protect you from what's on the ground. It doesn't make a lot of sense. His car, his shoes were still by, were still by the front door. His switch was there. His phone was in the kitchen. It just didn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And I still can't figure it out. People are being, well, that those that goes back to those keyboard warriors I talked about on the first interview that you and I had. 
They're still at it. It'll never stop. There's cowards in this world. And then there's people who are go-getters. My beat, my feet, they're on the ground. They're never going to leave the ground. I'm going to find my son. The, the rumor mill on social media has done nothing uh, to advance this case. Credit says in They have this uh, formulated opinion on who we are, not who we truly are. They've never met us. We've never been, we've never crossed paths with some of these folks. But I have told them all online, if you want to know, just ask me. I'll answer your questions to the best of what I can. There are some things that I cannot give you because law enforcement has dictated that we are not to provide certain information. But I will try. I am direct, I am brash, but I am very respectful. So, if you have questions, ask. I'll give you what I can. Just be respectful, please. And keep in mind, there's three parents and there's thousands and millions of people out there that may have a question. I am, we are trying to get to them, I promise you.